So this is a project, uh, Insider Threat Mitigation Line Project. We're trying to mitigate insider threats for the DOD and the US government. Uh, it's a uh, project I'm co-PIing with uh, Dr. Will, Bill Kralaycomb, who will speak next, actually. Um, and by insider, we're talking about employees, uh, contractors, trusted business partners, anybody that has authorized access to an organization system. Okay, so we're all insiders, right? Let's see. Okay. So uh, what we're trying to do here is develop uh, indicators, basically uh, indicators that can that can be populate uh, in, uh, insider threat detection rule engines. Uh, and we're trying to make sure these indicators are scientifically and uh, operationally validated. Uh, this is a hard problem. Uh, the need has never been greater. Uh, DOD and government agencies are uh, challenged to build insider threat programs that are mandated by executive order. Um, and the challenges are, have never been greater either, I would say. Uh, attacks uh, are, don't happen that often, but they are, uh, as we've seen in the last couple of years, they're very uh, costly. Uh, so it's hard to get good data, as, as Kurt said. Um, the malicious and benign behaviors are difficult to distinguish. These are authorized employees, uh, contractors, and so forth, uh, doing actions that they do every day, but sometimes it's with malicious intent. So difficult to distinguish, difficult to get the statistical significance there. Our FY14 focus here was on insider spies, so people that transfer classified or controlled information to some foreign entity. Uh, and we're particularly looking at social networks, social networks of these uh, insider spies. One thing that we know from looking at social network analysis is that the insiders are not the top actors uh, in these social networks. And so it's not a kind of conventional social network analysis that we're doing here. We're looking at changes in relationships in the social network over time. How do those change? So our hypothesis is that over time, insider social ne networks exhibit a weakening of internal ties, that is ties to people internal to the organization and strengthening of ties to people outside the organization. The data that we're looking at here is uh, from the CERT uh, Insider Threat Database. We've got uh, about 140 uh, insider espionage incidents coded in that database. Um, and this was collected over, over the years looking at mostly public records, but court records and media reports to, uh, to document these cases in a consistent, consistent manner. So what we're looking at is looking at uh, drawing out the social networks of these uh, insiders and measuring the connection strength of the different players involved in those incidents over time. So we're looking at the insiders' connections with family, insiders' connections with coworkers, and insiders' connections with other the adversaries, the people you know, that the information, classified information is being transferred to. The connection measures, the strength measures that we're looking at, first of all, we're looking at communication frequency. But we, uh, you know, eventually we'll look at other measures. Some of these, this is kind of exploratory in this phase, looking at reciprocity, is it two-way communication, time spent, how much time is spent in the communication, how much volume is being communicated per communication. The F affect, we're actually looking at this as well the negative or positive emotion associated with a connection as being an indicator of strength, and uh, truthfulness or deception might be another measure we could look at there. So this is just a little context for understanding this problem. So on the left, left side, we've got uh, national security interests uh, that uh, you know, need to be upheld. Uh, on the right side, we have competing interests, competing group interests. So what kind of competing interest might play a role here? Insider self-interest, self-preservation of the insider is a, is a strong motivation. Foreign national interest, ideological interest, these sort of things pull the insider away from the national security interests. And how do uh, social networks fit in here? Well, we've got group norms uh, for the US government, the DOD, 
Uh, these are rules and policies associated with protecting information. Uh, the insider is part of the social network associated with, with that, but they may also be uh, a part of social network, competing social networks with competing group norms. And the insider here in these cases basically is making a risk trade-off. Uh, what we'd like them to do, of course, is to uh, conform to the societal pressures that are in, in place, moral, reputational, institutional, legal, maybe most importantly for us, the security technologies that were put in place in order to make sure that the insider makes the choice of cooperating, protecting national security. Uh, what can happen, of course, is that they can uh, submit to competing pressures and make the wrong trade-off. Uh, defection, spying, sabotage, or, or worse. So the, the question here for our project is, when does the insider uh, make the decision not to uh, obey rules and policies put in place? What are the indicators associated with them deciding to do that and to uh, essentially bowing to the competing pressures uh, to uh, defect from the um, the, the rules that they're supposed to live by. So the observations that we've had so far, I realized I skipped the slide earlier. I wanted to mention that uh, our, our work has increasingly uh, been uh, supported by our academic collaborators, Kathleen Carley here in the audience as well. Uh, her group uh, in KSOS at, at CMU uh, has been very valuable in, in uh, helping us uh, perform these social network analyses for these spies. Uh, and in 15, we'll talk about some information flow analysis that we're going to conduct with uh, UC Davis. So we'll talk a little bit more about that later. The analysis that uh, Kathleen's group has helped us um, conduct has initially been over uh, a set of 140 insider spies from the database. The broad analysis that we initially did showed increasing reliance on electronic means of illicit transfer and communications supporting the transfer of that uh, classified information. Uh, so this will feed into a, tech, a more information flow technical analysis we'll do later, shows the, the value of that work, even though in classified systems, you know, there's usually a fair amount of separation involved. We've also elaborated the time series for two of the cases, two of the incidents that we've got, John Walker and the uh, Walker spy ring that took place in the 70s and 80s, as well as the more recent uh, private Manning and the WikiLeaks compromise. So the hypothesis uh, we, we, we've seen through this analysis of the hypothesis is supported, but the situation is a bit more complex than we framed in the initial hypothesis. For instance, internal connections the insider's internal connections with others in, inside the organization may weaken or strengthen over time. Uh, and we included the family network in there as well. And what we saw is that the connections with the family were, were weakening, but connections with other in the organization, especially those that were colluding with the, with the insider, uh, strengthened over time. We looked at a, a, a measure called betweenness. So betweenness is uh, social network measure that uh, measures uh, the shortest, the number of shortest paths between two individuals through the insider. So if you think of the, about that picture I had previously, the insider was in the middle. How many shortest paths are there between individuals? What we saw was that uh, that um, betweenness measure for the insider spies was increasing over time. There was a decrease in the ratio of internal connections to external connections. So again, this generally is supporting our hypothesis. Um, of course, you know, what we need to do is there, there are some indicators associated with these observations, but we need to, uh, in order to gain confidence, we need to look at the baseline population and see that they're actually statistically significantly different from uh, what we saw in the cases. And this is a part of our future work. So this is a slide uh, that is kind of an advertisement for the poster session that Car Kathleen Carley's group will uh, be uh, presenting later today. Shows uh, the betweenness measures for the two spies. I'm not going to talk about it, 
But just wanted to mention, come to the poster session and you'll get the experts uh, telling you about this uh, analysis. In addition to hypothesis testing, we're th you know, developing theory. This is the next step in making sure that you know, what you're doing is linked to other work in the scientific community. This is a system dynamics model that was developed that uh, talks about social, growth, social capital growth and transfer. So this, uh, on, the, on the right side, was a model that was uh, developed by uh, another person uh, that showed how social capital growth can, can gr social capital can grow within an organization over time. I combined this with uh, uh, looking at the adversary, say if there was a weakening of social capital internally, does that promote uh, the growth of social capital to external entities? And via the mechanisms that were defined in, in that model, that transfer, that tr transfer does occur. Now this is kind of notional at this stage and what we want to do is take the observations from our data analysis to ground this model to provide kind of an executable face for a theory for what's going on here. Our work with UC Davis, I mentioned, uh, was with Sean Pysert and uh, PhD student Julie Ard. Uh, combines the social network analysis we're doing with uh, information flow network analysis. So what we're trying to do is earlier detection, lower false positive rates, focus not on insider access rights. Remember, insiders have authorized access to an organization's system to do their job. So, but we're, what we're looking at is the movement and trajectory of information flow. So the idea is to document what the uh, baseline document flows, what are the regular workflows within the organization, and then look at actuals in real time to determine if there's a difference between those actuals and what's uh, normal for the organization. So there's, we, we basically need to look at comparing documents to documents and flows to flows. So we have document similarity measures, hashing, plagiarism detection algorithms, keyword matching are some of the approaches we're looking at for measures there. In flow similarity, we're looking at uh, graph matching algorithms. So this is part of Julie Ard's work. She's got a very musical name, I, I love it, and she, she's a great writer. She wrote a, a paper called uh, Information Behaving Badly at the uh, New Security Paradigms Workshop in 2013. So that's, that's the basis for the work that we'll be looking at for this next year. Our plans for uh, coming up is we're moving from the look at the insider incidents, the espionage incidents in particular. Uh, looking, we'll be looking at some anonymized SEI emails in order to determine what the social networks are for, you know, quote unquote, normal people. Uh, uh, <laughs> with the idea that this is going to give us some feel for what social, how social networks are going to evolve over time. Um, but that's not the last word. We're also looking at en Enron emails. Uh, these are public. There's been a lot of analysis done on this, but the nice part about this is that it has, if we look at the inside, in, Enron insiders as a whole, they, they can form the insider, essentially, and then we can look at their behavior and their behavior relative to others within the organization at the time to determine that difference between what's uh, uh, a problematic versus what's normal. The ultimate uh, say here is going to be when we look at partner data. And we've got a number of partners in the US government uh, signed up to provide data to, to help us move this to the next level and actually test these things out on operational networks. The same thing is going to apply uh, for information, our information flow network analysis in FY15 and 16. So we'll have basically the same, same approach there. We'll ground our theory based on the observations that we come up with. In terms of transition, uh, worked with Kathleen Carley and a group of other uh, modeling and simulation experts in insider threat last summer and we, um, in a workshop we put on. And we're going to be documenting these in a journal called Computational and Mathematical Organization Theory uh, in a special issue of that, that journal, uh, probably coming up next summer or so. 
We're also apply, uh, plan to apply uh, these approaches to projects within the DOD to, to improve insider threat architectures within the DOD. Last word is uh, publications. Uh, what we've used to kind of move this out, to transition it out, is um, so, uh, a notion called design patterns. We've captured in the insider threat mitigation controls as mitigation patterns. We've documented a number of these, and uh, this year we've, de we've uh, defined an approach to uh, a, a means for identifying a language of these patterns and a means for uh, traversing this, pat this language to uh, identify capability development scenarios for improving the, this, the insider threat capability within insider threat programs. So this is our, our kind of transition vehicle. And that's all. <laughs>